the big event of the evening, the Dream of Mile. And the meeting again between Steve Cram, the former champion of the world, with the current world record holder still, a time he set on this track of 3 minutes 46.32 back in 1985. And he takes on the man tonight who took away his world title uh, some months ago in September in Rome in the World Championships. And that man is Abdi Bili, wears number 269, and he is from Somalia. There's a splendid lineup. Steve Crabb from Great Britain, the developing young Enfield Harrier, 24. There's Steve Cram and Peter Elliott, of course, who was a silver medalist in the European World, and the World 800 Meter Championship, rather. Uh, there's Paul Larkins from Great Britain, member of Wolverhampton and Bilson, who won the 1500 in Olympic qualifying time in Helsinki, but will pl be playing a new role tonight, probably the pacemaker on the third lap. There's the new East German sensation, Jens Peter Harold, who's the uh, fastest 1500 meter runner in the world this year. There's Chiziri of uh, Kenya, Chariot of Kenya, John Walker of New Zealand, uh, Steve Scott, America, Jim Spivey, America, and James Mays, who will make the early pace. And Abdi Bealey, number 269. Young man who... Uh, Made the national squad as a junior at football. I was injured and turned to athletics, went to an American university, and what an impact he's made. <laughs> Not exactly the runt in the pack either, because he's one of 15 children, Abdi Bili. Seven brothers and sisters from the Horn of Africa. The first man from Mogadishu, or from Somalia, in fact, to win a world championship at anything. So he really does lead... Uh, a tremendous uh, role there for Africa for the third world generally. And he was thrown out of the Dream Mile last year. They didn't think that he was a great puller. They made him run in the 1500 meters instead. So uh, they had to ask him rather nicely to come back for this Dream Mile tonight. Brought up on camel's milk and uh, really is a fascinating guy to talk to. There's an interesting man there uh, wearing uh, 120, Paul Larkins. And we think he's going to be the pacemaker after running splendidly. Uh, this uh, couple of nights ago, running very, very well indeed. Two, 269, all the interest will be on the, uh, the current world champion versus the past world champion. Abdi Bili, Steve Cram, drawn alongside one another. In fact, looking at the draw, they're drawn in positions 9 and 10, a 12 man field. The dream mark. Away they go, first time. No nonsense, and James Mays goes streaking off in front, followed by. Uh, Paul Larkins. Steve Crabb got away to get rid of the bunch and Peter Elliott in third place. So as they settle down, it's James Mays, the eternal pacemaker, out in front, slowing down, and quite rightly so, because he's gone off too quickly to establish a position. In second place, Paul Larkins, who I assume will take the third lap when Mays gets tired, the vital third lap. That's when you've got to keep the pace going. And in third place is Steve Crabb of Enfield. Fourth is Peter Elliott of Rotherham. In fifth place, Harold, the East German champion. And sixth is Cherio to Kenya. Uh, Bealey, relying on his finishing speed, as he did in the World Championship, hanging on at the back there, right at the back of the whole pack. Steve Cram working his way through slowly. So as they go through 400 metres or 440 yards, the time 55-28. Mays leading, Larkin second, Crab is third, Elliot four, Harold five. Cherio in sixth place. In seventh place, Steve Cram improving all the time. Paul Larkins must be wondering what he's got to do because he's got to pick up the pace from James Mays. I'm not certain that Mays is helping them too much. There's a five-metre gap before uh, Larkins is due to take them through in 2.49, and he's not even certain he can live with that, although he's running very well this week. But the man who judges pace perfectly, Abdi Bealey, just moved off the back of the pack. And remember, he's got the sort of finishing speed over 800 metres, where he's already beaten Sebastian Coe this season. And he did that from the back as well, coming through uh, through the field. So Steve Crabb running well is ahead of Peter Elliott there, then uh, Chariot of uh, Kenya, and Steve Cram looking his majestic self, running slightly wide, but looking good and looking very healthy. Two laps there. 154.47. Outside a world record pace, but nevertheless very fast indeed. But this is a race that really matters. It's the winning that counts. And Paul Larkins taking over on the third lap. Can he keep the pace going? Steve Krabs followed the leader all the way. He's in second place. Elliot out of trouble in third. 
still Cherry at four. In fifth place, Cram. Perils losing ground. And Beely has still got to start running. He's moving up slowly. He's next to back at the moment, the world champion. And Steve Cram looking poised to come off that curb, get clear and get into space for the attack on the last lap. He's got to get off there. Larkin's working very hard to get, keep them going. And up on the outside, it's Jaziri of Kenya. Fourth in the World Championship 1500. And Beely comes ominously through. 2.53 at the bell. Still Jaziri leading. Crab in second place. Elliot is third. Cram four. And Beely improving all the time. Very quickly indeed. If Cram could see him, if Cram moves out now, Beely's blocked. Beely's going up on the outside. Will Beely get the first run? He has indeed. Peril goes through to follow him, a very fast finisher. And Cram trying to get through on the inside. A bump there. And Beely hits the front now with 200 to go. And there's nowhere for Cram to go. He got trapped on the curb. Elliot comes up outside him. It's Harold in second place. Beely leads, Harold second, Elliot third, Cram four. Cram had a rough ride, but Beely now being attacked by Harold, the East German champion. The fastest 1500 meter in the runner in the world. And Cram's going to run on the inside. Steve Cram got a clear run, and Cram takes advantage, and Cram comes home to win the Dream Mile. Second, I think, Elliot. Third, Harold. Fourth, Beely. And what a run. Well, in the back straight, he was in all sorts of trouble. He ran up people's backs, he got in the way, people got in the way, and then suddenly the dream came true. There was a gap on the inside, and when he saw it, well, he couldn't believe it, but he knew what to do. He had the ability to do it. The last lap, 53.8 seconds, and in fact, he finished that mile 348.85, clearly the fastest time in the world this year by quite a long way, and that, I believe, is the fourth time in succession that Cram has won this race. He climbed over three Britons and two others to get here, too. He'd been into the, uh, into the battleground long before this and watched Peter Elliott shut him out on the outside. Harold's already gone after Beely. Harold is a tremendous sprint finisher. Watch Cram go again. He's blocked off by Elliott. He's come through on the inside over the last 150 meters. Beely looks to be away. He knows that Harold is a good sprint finisher. Now watch Cram look for a gap on the inside. He can't believe it's going to happen. He shouldn't expect it to be there, but he's full of strength and full of running. He came here saying this wasn't necessarily to win. It was to answer questions. Well, he's answered questions and he's posed a lot of questions for all the other milers and 1500 meter runners. The gap appeared. Cram was the strong man on the night. 53-8 for the last 400 metres. And a great run by Peter Elliott as well, beating the world champion. And justifying his move up to the mile and 1,500 metres from 800 metres. That will uh, steal Elliott's results to stay there. But what about Cram? The self-doubt must have been niggling all winter when he performed so badly in that world championship by his standards. It was a rare failure, but Beely, I believe, ran the race the way he normally does it, 